And now the woman who's going to bring us to the end of our evening together, Ms. Sheila Shaw, is a longtime San Diego resident, a playwright, and of course, a contributor to Long Story Short. She is also a certified yoga therapist where she, her specialty is working with individuals with health challenges. So please welcome the very flexible Ms. Sheila Shaw. I have lived enough life to know that time brings about a change. And with the divorce, I became a cliche. A single mom looking into the eyes of her nine-year-old son, promising him that yes, his dad still loved him, even though we didn't all live together anymore reassuring myself that, given time, everything would be all right. Reassuring the folks at work that, yes, I was going through a divorce, but that didn't mean I couldn't continue to do my job as a teacher. I had one goal, that was to keep the two of us safe and happy. That's why I was so thrilled to find the perfect place. While walking to my sister's house one day, I saw a for rent sign. Right price, right neighborhood, close to family, available. I was thrilled to find this three bedroom, two bath apartment with 1,400 square feet. I felt like a queen in that apartment. I was thrilled to find this place with a single car garage. I loved pulling into that garage, closing the garage door, getting out of my car, and walking into my very spacious kitchen. All of this spelled safety to me. Hmm. I loved everything about that apartment. And the fact that it had a fireplace in the living room, a fireplace, made me feel like I was in a home of my own. After about a year of this living large, I finally began to let my guard down. Given my newfound contentment with this place, I, it finally happened. I stopped worrying and crying over the death of my marriage. Things were easier for my son, too. He no longer felt that the absence of his father meant an absence of his father's love. We were in a pretty good place, both physically and emotionally. So at the end of a really good week of getting positive feedback from his teachers, I agreed to let him have a sleepover. We invited his 11-year-old cousin Christopher over, and the boys could stay up as long as they wanted and play as much as they wanted. I got up on Saturday morning, and I felt really good. I was rested, and I was satisfied. I had a happy child. What more could a mom ask for? And I had a day off. I could hear the boys outside playing on the patio, <laughs> the patio with the distant view of the ocean, no less. <laughs> now, I've said that I'm a newly divorced mom, 
but I didn't say before that I was also that guilt-ridden mom. I tried to satisfy my son by and soothe him by buying all of the latest toys. Don't judge. <laughs> it actually worked for the most part. One day, when I was feeling particularly appreciative of the apartment, my property manager let it slip that my upstairs neighbor, Tabitha, was also the property owner. She and I had um, exchanged only a few words in the months since I had been living there. But we were on speaking terms. So here I am, this new, newly divorced mom, buying all these expensive toys to soothe her son. So it shouldn't surprise you that it was actually a toy that got things started. Consider Voltron. Now, before every kid had his own electronic device, there was Voltron. The first thing you need to know about Voltron is that it was actually five toy lions that combined to form one large unit. We had blue lion and yellow lion to form the feet. Red lion formed one arm, and green lion formed the other arm, and there was black lion. He was the heart and soul of the toy. Five toys to play with, all under the direction of these two boys, combining to form one mighty robot. When Zarkon's evil forces disturb the peace, it was up to the lions of Voltron to save the universe against their evil. And once assembled, they even had, they even had these little sound effects. I noticed that the boys were eventually joined by my upstairs neighbor's nephew. <sighs> My nephew, Christopher, who was 11 years old, was the largest of the three boys, and so he was Black Lion. My son, Jason, was Green Lion. And Lawrence, the little red, excuse me, he had blonde hair and blue eyes, and he was the little kid that was visiting from upstairs. He was Green Lion. And the boys took turns being Blue and Yellow Lion. This toy brought the boys together, so I left them alone to play. Pretty soon, Christopher and Jason come into the house looking for me. And Christopher says, Auntie, he just gathered up all our toys and went upstairs. We thought maybe it was um, part of the game since he said, be right back. Jason added, but he hasn't come back yet. Well, I was as confused as the boys, but I thought all we needed to do was go up and say, when would Lawrence be coming back with, with Voltron? So the three of us set out on a, on a mission. Up the stairs, we went. We got to the top of the stairs. Now, the stairs have this uh, very narrow porch I stand on the porch, and the two boys stand on uh, the steps below me. I open the screen door, knock on the door, close the screen door, and wait for my neighbor to answer the door. She flings the door open and screams, don't come up here talking to me about some nigger shit. The boys are frozen. I take one step back. 
I drop my head. I become calm and powerful, lucid and dangerous. I am now supercharged Mother Voltron on steroids. No one hurts these boys. I open the door with one hand, yank her out of her house by her collar with the other hand, kick the door shut, and start lifting her to go over the banister. No one hurts these boys. I have every intention of throwing her off this second story balcony. She's flapping and she's cursing and she's twisting. And somehow I get behind her and I lift her. Then I hear this pleading. Auntie, no! Mommy, please don't! I realize that my nephew Christopher has me by the waist. My son has me by the leg. And both boys are pulling me with all of their might. Sobbing, pleading, no, no. I hear their voices and something inside of me clicks in. I really don't want them to see me kill this woman. <laughs> that could mess them up for life. So I release my landlady and she scrambles back in the house. She locks her door and the boys surround me. They're hugging me, holding me, and I hug them back. Somehow the three of us manage to get down the stairs, still holding each other. And we're still holding each other when we get inside and are sitting on the sofa. We're just sitting there. <laughs> and then Christopher begins to laugh. <laughs> he hoots, <laughs> Jason, <laughs> did you see Auntie Sheila? She was mad. <laughs> <laughs> she was so mad. <laughs> we laughed. We laughed until we couldn't laugh any longer. We decided to put a pizza in the oven and pop some popcorn, and we continued to laugh. Yeah, I was mad. I was mad about the divorce and the betrayal. I was mad about the gossip that was going on around me. Uh, at work, I was mad that I had let my guard down. I was mad for a while, but I was no longer a danger to her or anyone else. I had never met that beast inside of me, but it gave me a new kind of courage. I learned that I could take care of myself and my son. I could keep us safe. I could be strong and happy. Thank you.